Uh, hi, my name is Claudia Palladini and I am uh, a postdoc uh, researcher at the Université Libre de Bruxelles. Um, I work uh, uh, on uh, evolved stars. This is like the future of our sun that uh, um, one day when the fuel inside uh, the sun will, uh, uh, will finish, uh, the sun will start to expand and it will become uh, like a red giant. And uh, by that time, I hope uh, we will all move to some other planet. And um, uh, a little bit during this, uh, what we call evolutionary stage, at a certain point, uh, uh, the star will sta starts to lose mass, all the material that is produced during the lifetime, and it goes into the interstellar, interstellar space. And uh, this material then becomes the building block for the next generation of uh, planets, uh, stars, and eventually also life. So um, if you look at the picture here around the teaser, you see a lot of beautiful stars. So it's an old picture of uh, us. It's our, <laughs> um, our ancient parents. <laughs> and um, uh, one of the things that uh, I'm interested in is exactly this process, which is called the mass loss process, so stellar wind. And um, I studied this in my, um, during uh, my, my scientific career, and this is my interest. And uh, uh, I'm here to observe some of these uh, objects, some of these stars, uh, of evolved stars. Um, and for this, I usually use uh, uh, the, what is called the VLTI, the interferometer, where we combine the light of the different telescopes that are up here. And uh, what we obtain in this way is uh, like a virtual telescope, which is what much bigger than the uh, single dish telescope. And this allows us to observe uh, the different layers of the star. You can imagine like a onion. So we look at the different layers and we can really picture the stars not anymore like points as you see them in the sky, but uh, like, uh, like you see the sun. And, um, and we go really to look deep inside where this process of mass loss starts. And uh, uh, yesterday evening we were doing some observation, but this time not with the VLTI because the VLTI observation were already done last year. We used uh, one of the unit telescope, the 8 meters telescope, and uh, we tried to observe one of these stars, the dust distribution, and I was super excited because uh, probably we detected uh, a disk, which was kind of unexpected because um, most of these stars until uh, uh, in, in, um, in the literature are considered like uh, round, but uh, if you look then uh, at the next evolutionary stage, which are the planetary nebula, they have all uh, uh, kind of weird uh, and very beautiful shapes that you can Google around and, <laughs> and see, uh, like butterflies uh, and uh, hourglasses. But uh, these asymmetries should start somewhere, and that's what uh, uh, we are looking at, and with the power of, uh, with, the, with the highest angular resolution of the VLT and the VLTI, we can really start to see now these asymmetries. This super power powerful instruments that we have uh, nowadays. There are new instruments that are in the pipeline and that they will be built. Some of them are already um, in, in progress uh, and uh, we are expecting also the ELT. Uh, but we are also, as interferometric community, we are also uh, thinking about what to do afterwards. I think really the future is uh, um, to have some act to expand, like my dream would be to expand the facility that we have here, to have like longer baseline, and to have go to a race, like maybe, um, uh, well, something like Halma, but in the optical, in a way that we can uh, start to observe not only um, the stars that are nearby, that is what we do now, but also to look at uh, stars that are uh, in other clusters and maybe to have a better uh, uh, sensitivity and uh, maybe one day to be able also to observe um, the planets that are around these HB stars so that we could look really at what will happen to our Earth.